snacks made from crickets and plane rides fueled by microorganisms. Now, these groundbreaking solutions have won a $1 million funding boost as the teams behind them emerged winners of a challenge to solve problems in climate change and food security. A clean aviation fuels venture, GAFT, won for its work on developing carbon-negative alternatives, while food technology startup Cricket One is incorporating insects into meat products as a sustainable form of low-cost protein. These solutions beat over 1,000 submissions across 100 countries. To clinch the top award, they were judged based on three criteria. The impact that the project would make and how feasible and financially viable the proposals are. So some of the startup would have technical expertise, but they also need management expertise, marketing expertise. And to scale, you also need to have investors to come in. So this is the challenge they will face going forward after having won the prize here. For more on their work, we're joined now in the studio by two of the winners tonight. Martin Spencer, he is VP of Business Development at GAFT, and Bicky Nguyen. She is co-founder of Cricket One. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. Thank you. It must feel good tonight. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Martin, nice. let me begin with you. You are using a groundbreaking device that's been uh, an innovation by GAF that is really changing things up here. I want you to briefly explain to us how this works. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're a sustainable aviation fuel startup. So we're trying to replace conventional jet fuel with an alternative type of fuel that we make using carbon dioxide and renewable electricity. And so we can reduce a substantial amount of greenhouse gas emissions, which is obviously a big problem in aviation. Yeah, it is. I mean, we, we are familiar with sustainable aviation fuel use here in Singapore because Singapore has a target, of course, mm-hmm. a couple of targets uh, by 2026. I think there's another one by 2030 as to how much percentage we'll use. But in your case, you're not using what is known as the typical feedstock, right? Used cooking oil. So what exactly is happening with your particular method that makes it so different from the rest? Yeah, so like you said, Singapore is one of the largest uh, sustainable aviation fuel facilities in the world. And at the moment, what they use is used cooking oil as a feedstock for that process. Um, But the problem is, is that there's not a whole lot of that stuff around. And what we're trying to do is supplement the demand that will be necessary to meet those targets, like you pointed out, 1% in a few years' time and even more come 2030. Um, So the product that we're making is something that's very similar to used cooking oil, but entirely synthetic. And you'll also want to be able to kind of keep your carbon footprint down as well. Uh, there, there will be some challenges, obviously, but we're not going to be talking about that one today. We're, we're celebrating the win. Biggie, let me bring you in on the conversation now because uh, Cricket One is also doing something that we, we have been exploring a lot in Singapore as well, alternative protein use. But I think with insects, Singaporeans may not be so familiar with this. Tell us more about what you do? So at Cricket One, our goal is to uh, diversify and reshape our food system. And the way to go for it is to harmonize what is the food options out there. So for our culinary and sort of the the culture, so we've been eating only like based mainly on animal proteins or aquacultures. But with the pressures from climate change and also the limited resources, we might not have the luxury to have uh, meat protein daily or three meals a day anymore. So there's a role coming in with insects because they're more sustainable and then they're more efficient to farm and process. Yes. But then the highlights of that is they are packed with mineral, vitamins, and also essentially like protein. They're nutrient rich. You don't have everybody convinced yet because of this idea that they're insects, right? But you've got a bowl in front of you there that contains what are Chips? Cricket chips? <laughs> yes. So um, this is one of the retail business line that yeah. we just expanded. And they don't look like insects at all? No, I think we realise like uh, presenting the consumers, the whole insect might not be too hardcore for them. Yeah. So what we have to do is that we have to include the essence nutrition that extracted from cricket into the final product. So the one in front of you is literally is a cookbook. Right, like kropo. Yeah, kropo. Kropo, yes. So, so it's, it's local... like uh, tapioca yeah. base, but we okay. make it another level up by including protein. So one bag of this is equal to one like um, ham and cheese uh, sandwich or <laughs> okay. 
or bread. So and they're not in the shapes of the cricket anymore. So we believe, and actually, it's proven, it's a way to convert consumers. Yeah, I think it's it's the thing is that it has to be ultimately whatever the alternative protein is, it has to taste yes. good, mm-hmm. right? Consumers are picky, aren't they? We cannot keep selling the beautiful story about sustainability. We have to make it interesting and valuable for the consumer to try and it has to be tasty for them to come back. Yeah. So at the end of the day, <laughs> returning customer is a real revenue for the business. Yeah, the picture that we have on the alternative protein source in studio, I mean, I'm sure our viewers will see it a bit later. It doesn't look anything like the chips that you have. Yeah. All right, so commercialization, you want to sell this in Singapore. Yes. Right? Yes. And you intend to expand here. You're already selling this in, in Vietnam, correct? So, and and uh, elsewhere as well, many so jurisdictions. we have two business lines. So for B2B ingredient, we export to more than 27 countries globally. Yeah. And then uh, for the, uh, like, Business, like B2B, line, uh, sorry, retail lines like that, then we are focusing more into Vietnam and Singapore. Okay. But then the green light from the Singapore regulatory uh, sent a very good signal. Mm. So, We've got so, to pull those regulatory levers. Martin, <laughs> a, a quick question to you as well about your sort of plans for making inroads into Singapore. What's on the horizon there? Well, obviously, thanks to the fact that we've now obtained this grant funding, uh, there are certain things that we can accelerate and improve. Um, You know, we've done really well to get to where we are, but there's still a long way to go. Uh, And we're really glad to have obtained that grant funding because that will be an enormous help. And of course, also, you know, part of the livability challenge is to explore the opportunities that a foreign uh, company such as our own has here in Singapore. Um, and ultimately, we're going to be looking to, to producing our product here uh, in Singapore and then hopefully help with those targets that you have here. Yeah, raising that funding is critical for projects and startups like yours. Absolutely. Once again, congratulations to both of you. Well-deserved winners. I hope you enjoy. Well, we can enjoy some <laughs> of those cricket chips a bit later on. Uh, I've been speaking there to two of the winners from the livability challenge of course martin spencer vp of business development at gaft and bikino and she's co-founder of cricket one